Hello class, back for another night. Uh, tonight's going to be a lot of math, got to get it done. So um, let's wrap it up. Okay, what I'd like to do first is the uh, question sheet I assigned last week. Now, this is that question sheet 1 to 10. It starts off with some uh, volume problems. The, fr the first five are all volume for a cylinder right for like a round tank and the last five were a grab bag of uh cubic feet centimeters uh, excuse me celsius fahrenheit so on which we'll get to okay now at the top of the page and i i think you can see it because i can see what this thing is uh recording it's actually just about right okay up at the top here i have the formulas we don't need them right this minute but we will need them a little later on okay that's the two formulas you need for fahrenheit celsius uh something that's been around longer than i have on the plumbing exam still not quite sure why it's there but it is the last i heard which was a year or two ago it was uh still on the uh on the list of formulas you need to know All right now these are some of the ones you're not going to get now any kind of chart uh you will get but this is not a chart. So remember these two uh, formulas. All right. In any case, let's start with the, uh, the volume of a cylinder. Now, I think I told you, if you have your question sheet, uh, that was, you would have downloaded it probably in, I'd say, October. It was the three pages on uh, the formulas you need. And I'll use, I'll mention or write the formula for each of these problems as we go. Uh, at the first one, if the diameter is 14 inches and the height is 36 inches, how big is the, uh, excuse me, what is the volume in gallons? All right, now remember, all of these that I'm giving you are in gallons, all right? If you have to go to something else, cubic feet, whatever they're asking for, start with gallons and then work your way to what it is that you need. Okay, but in this case, they're all gallons. Okay, now this one's interesting. I hadn't noticed until I just looked at it now. Uh, these are just random numbers I pulled up. And uh, I thought of, this is about the size of a relatively small water heater. And I have the answer here, which I'll get to. And um, this, so this would be about 14 inches across and 36 inches high. A relatively small um, water heater. Also about the size of an x tank, if you do a well pump. The small, I think it's the WX-201. Uh, I think it is a small tank. This is probably as big as that. In any case, let's, uh, let's see what we got. So the question is, if the diameter, I'll write these down. If D equals 14 and H, the height or length, I'm going to go with the height. But remember, you could have a tank laying on its side, so don't get that mixed up. All right, height and length are the same. The formula here calls it height. Number one, D equals 14 and H equals 36. Okay, what's the formula? All right, for this one, I'll write everything down. The others, I'll, I'll uh, abbreviate it a bit. But let's get started using the whole formula. So this one here, is 14 inches and 36 inches. Okay, this is very important. You actually can't do the problem without it. You're certainly not going to get the right answer. All right, so if it's in inches and inches, the formula we use is what I call the first one. All right, now take a look at your formula sheet. It's 0 0.0034 is the first one. The second one is 0 0.0408, and the last one is 5.875. So this one, you write it like this, gallons equals diameter squared in inches times the height inches times 0 0.0034. Now I know we've got a little, we did a little bit with this, but this is what it looks like with a number of different problems. All right, so this one, 
I'm going to circle these again because they're important. All right. Once I saw that it was inches and inches, I go to that solution, which is 0.0034. Okay. All right. So this here would be uh, the diameter squared. I don't know if I've got all of the math written down. No, I don't. I'm going to have to use a little calculator here. All right, so we got 14 squared. Let's write this one out completely. 14 squared times 36. It's not squared, it's just 36 times 0. 0.0034. Okay. So let's see what 14 squared looks like. It's like 196. So right here, you have 196, right, times 36, times 0. 0.0034, okay? Next, multiply these two together. Pretty big number there, but don't worry about it. It's going to go down up because of this. It's going to be a lot smaller. Let's see. Times point. 23.99. Good. So we could bring this gallons down. All right. I didn't repeat it all those times. It's 23.99 gallons. All right, again, like a little smaller than a 30-gallon water heater. Okay, that's it. Again, beside memorizing the formulas, watch out for the inches, inches, or inches and feet, or feet and feet. Okay, that can be given to you in three different ways. Okay, so the first one, number one, is 23.99. Now, like I said, I'm not going to go through all of this for the rest of them. Now, one thing, uh, imagine doing all of this longhand. The problems that we got back in, when I took the exam back in the 70s, um, there was no calculators. Uh, I guess there maybe there were. Actually, there were because my kid brother had one back in 74. It was like $300, $400 then, which would be like $1,500 today maybe. Um, but it was unusual, and you definitely couldn't take it into the exam. In fact, the exam, you weren't allowed to take it into the exam until, I bet it was maybe the late 80s. It was quite a while that they, they before they agreed to let you take a calculator in. In any case, the longhand days are over, but you still have to know how to do the formula. Okay. Okay, number two. This one here, we have uh, the D equals five feet. H equals 17 feet. Now, this one is obviously a different formula. This, is a, this isn't even a, anywhere near a water heater. Five foot diameter is like a commercial uh, tank and it would be 17 feet long which is the length of a good size room so this is a good size tank this is probably going to be let's put it this way it's going to be over I see the answer here. it's going to be over a thousand gallons so let's see what it looks like so let's see the formula gallons equals diameter square in feet times the height in feet all right, times, because it's feet and feet, we use this formula. So if you multiply this out, times 0. 
times 17. Okay, this is, I'm just going to call this uh, G here. All right. Like I said, I'm going to start cutting out some of the steps and go right for the answer. So what do we do? We're going to multiply 25, which is 5 squared, times 17. So let's see what that looks like. Looks like 4 and a quarter times 5.875. Okay, let me double check it, make sure. Yep, that's the same answer that I had earlier. Okay, 2,496 gallons. Good size tank. Now, is there ever a time when you're going to need this? I don't think so. We're not going to be designing any tanks. However, now let's say that you go into a place and you have to estimate how big the tank is so they can get another one. You can measure it. And as long as there's no insulation on it, you can you can get the size of it, get the dimension, the diameter, right, and the length. There you go. And you could tell them this is how big the tank is, and uh, the next tank... The shape could change slightly, bigger diameter, shorter length, whatever. As long as it comes up to whatever this is here, almost 2,500 gallons, you'd be okay. All right, but normally, no, you're not going to be using these. Once you get your license, probably not going to see them again. Okay, that was question number uh, two. I put one there, but this is question number two. All right, so let's get rid of this. Now, because we're not doing live, uh, the advantage is I get a better uh, video here, but I can't, you know, I can't take any questions. So, and I, I know usually you don't ask questions once we go live, but if you have one, please ask it then if something's not making sense. Okay. All right. Question number three. This one here is going to be a little different. This one's going to be inches and feet. So what's that going to look like? So if we have... Diameter equals 23 inches and the height equals 48 feet. All right, remember, this is number three. Okay, so we got inches and feet. It's the one we have not done yet. All right, so let's do this. Equals. 23 squared times 48 times 0. 0.0408. All right. Let's see how that works out. So you got 23 times 23 equals 529. times 48. All right, let's see how that worked out. 1035, yep, 103599. Okay, so we got 1,035 gallons. All right, pretty big. Uh, the reason it's so big here is the diameter's not that big. That's only as big as like an 80-gallon electric water heater. But the uh, length is, of course, it's equal to about three rooms long. It's a, it's a long tank. Okay, so uh, I think I mentioned this to you. There is a way to check your problem 
uh, if it's in inches and uh, like this, inches and feet to see if you did it right. Okay, what you could do is, I'm not going to try to make that into uh, feet because if it was 24, obviously it'd be easy. This one's a little easier. So let's convert this 48 feet into inches. So 48 times 12. Let's see what that is. Five seventy six. Okay, so we're gonna do um, now. This was not and one of the questions. I'm just showing a way that you can prove that your answer is right if you take the test. So you take this, right? That didn't change. Five twenty nine. Plus uh, 576 times 576, right? Let's see what that is. I better lose, leave that one alone. Okay, I'm going to have to erase it and do it all over again. I don't want to do that. Okay, but in any case, this is how you get it. All right? 529 times 48 times 0.0408. Okay. Okay. Uh, no. That was number three. All right, number four. Hmm, time is going by kind of fast here. Number four, we have the uh, diameter equals three inches and the height is 42. Okay, now this is very small. This is a three inch piece of PVC with a cap on one end, standing it up straight, three and a half feet high. So it's not very big. All right. D equals three inches, H equals 42. Okay, this is what you should have for formula, 0034 because you got inches and inches. So we got a nine here times 42 times 0 0.0034. All right, I'm just gonna multiply this out straight out. Skip a step there. All right, we'll just go right across here, see what we got. We got nine times 42 times point. One point two eight. One point two eight gallons, right? Roughly one and a quarter gallons. And the last one, uh, this one here, if the diameter is twelve and the length is six feet, uh, what size tank do we have? I mean, what, what kind of gallons do we have? All right, let's see. So we get twelve and six. Okay, so gallons equals diameter square and in inches times the height in feet, right? Times point oh four oh eight one forty four times six. All right. Again, I'm going to just multiply this straight out, save a little time. Well, we 
It's like 34, 35, 25. Yep. That's good. Thirty-five and a quarter gallons. Okay, and that is it. All right, moving on. Um, let's find the area of a cubic. Uh, find how many cubic feet. If we have the following, Okay, I'm going to call it cubic feet because um, it's all given. And it has to, these all have to be in feet to multiply this out correctly. And sometimes you'll see this cubic contents. And then that would, if it was inches, this the answer would be in cubic inches. This one is a cubic feet. Now, unlike the ones we just did, this number six, you really can use. These numbers here don't make any sense because they're just some random numbers I came up with. Well, actually... Um, this would be a tiny basement or a basement that's been walled off. Okay, so let's say that you'd put a boiler in. This happened to me. Uh, actually, my father put the did the plumbing and the heating back in my cousin's house back in, during the blizzard of 78. So I remember when it was. I wasn't there. I was already in business. I came back maybe 15 years later to put in um, a second floor bathroom. Actually, it was a bathroom above this huge garage. It wasn't a three-stall, but it was about that. It was... If you did the area, it was equal to about a three stall. And uh, when I was in the basement, I noticed they had finished it since my dad was there years before. And there was a very small area where the boiler was, like seven feet by the width of the cell, maybe by 25 or 30. It was tiny and it was walled off. It was like, well, this, this is a, could be a problem. Somehow the boiler was working. And that was the first fan in the can I did. In fact, it wasn't even a fan in the can. It was some other brand. And uh, it was like back in the mid-90s, I would say. And um, so this problem here would be a problem, something like that. You walk in on a job where there's nowhere near enough air. You're swapping out a boiler. Now, you can't just do this like you don't see it. If you go in and you do something, um, the grandfather rights only extend to something that was legal when it went in. If somebody did it illegally or became illegal, like not enough air, you got to deal with it. This is a safety issue. So with that, let's see what this is. Uh, the numbers that I pulled out of the air were, uh, I think I did, uh, length 22, width 16, height 8. Okay. 22. All right. Length times width times height. All right. So this would be... Uh, a portion of a basement, okay? I don't think there's many houses. That's No, that's too small for a house. But this would be like uh, they finished the basement, and that's the that's the area they didn't finish, okay? So um, let's just see what we got. So the problem is very straightforward. You just multiply one times the other times the other, and let's see what we got. So we got 22 times 16 times 8 equals 2,816. Square feet, cubic feet. Okay. In this case, it would be cubic feet of air. Now, Let's say there's a boiler down there, and the boiler is 100 and a quarter for the whole house, of course. All right, the input, that's all you care about, 125,000, all right, that, of course, 125,000 input. And we have a water heater. And we'll say that's 50. So you got 175. 
excuse me, that's what you need. Okay? You need that many, uh, the equivalent to run that many, many BTUs. All right? So what you do is you take this, multiply it by 20. See what you got? Way short, dangerously short. Now, there's something, I don't know where it is, if it's still in the code book, but they used to call it unusually tight construction. So what I'll do is go to an extreme. Let's say you're in a vault, a bank vault. If you're in there long enough, probably you're not going to have any more air. It's going to be, you know, you're going to use up the air because there's no circulation of it. No air in, no air out. Now, the old houses in Florida, those old tenement houses, they're very drafty. It's actually very safe because you got a lot of air that infiltrates into the basement. And they're cold. You guys that work there know what I'm talking about. They're usually quite cold. Modern houses, uh, they tightened all that up. And the problem is that the air is not all that healthy upstairs because the house is so tight, which also means in the basement, if the basement is tight, um, you could have a problem too. But in any case, the code says that if you have this many BTUs available, and then you need this many, you don't even have half. You absolutely need a fan in the can. Now, I don't know the specs off a fan in the can at the top of my head, but I do know that my daughter had a basement that was not even half of this size. It was just a little room, a little tiny room with a huge boiler. It was like over 200,000 BTUs for, for a private home. And uh, we put a fan in the can in there. Um, and it's fine. So probably good if... If you're in, you know, if you're doing work with fan the cans, see how much air it can provide. But what I suspect is it will be more than adequate for any residential application that you have. Okay, now I didn't. None of this was on the uh, on the question sheet. I'm just showing you. This is the first question out of the six we've done where you can actually use this stuff. There it is here when you're doing a basement. Now, just out of curiosity, uh, so the answer, by the way for this problem was right here, right there. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna run out of time, I'm afraid, hold on a sec. Three, 10, now get a little time. Let's take a basement. I think I might've even used this sample before. It's actually my cell. Uh, it's 39 by 26, I think, but this is close. All right. And nine would be like right up to the ceiling, right? Right through the floor joist, right up against the subfloor. So this is a thousand right here, I believe. Uh, one thousand. This one's actually very convenient for me. Times 20. Okay, remember the number was 175? I didn't know this was going to be 180. My basement, with no rooms, nothing finished, 40, which is pretty big, 40 long, 25 wide, 9 high, was just enough for a modest boiler and a water heater. Okay? Actually, my boiler is a bit bigger than that. So technically, when I moved in here six years ago, it was a little bit, a little bit short. Uh, I have since finished half the cellar with a permit. I think I told you that. In fact, the electrician, electrical inspector just came by the other day for a final. And uh, so half the cellar is no longer available. And uh, I got a fan in the can. In fact, it was the electrical, I don't know if I told you that, the electrical inspector himself, the last trip here on the rough, mentioned about getting a fan in the can. And I just happened to have it. It wasn't installed yet because we were going to do it a little later on. And since then it went in. So, uh Unless you have a full cellar to work with, uh, even then it's going to be borderline like this. All right, so check it out. Check it out. You might have a tough inspector, a guy who's on the ball. And as you can see, this is not a hard formula to do. And then within a couple of minutes or less than that, he could tell you if you need a fan in a can. And if you didn't factor that into your price, it's going to be on you. So uh, that's how we can use 
uh, a problem like this one. Not the cylindrical, the one with the cylinders, which we just did five of. But when you have um, dimensions like this, it could be um, the cubic air in a, in a house. We really do use this one. Okay, moving on. Like I said, none of this was part of the question. It's just an example how you can use it. All right, next one was question number... Uh, Back to the, uh, uh, actually, I did this for myself. So the answer was 20, 28, 16 gallons, right? And the question I asked is, let's change that gallons to, uh, excuse me, change that cubic feet. Well, hold on, hold on. Find gallons of number six. Okay, let's find the weight, not the gallons. We already had the gallons right here. All right, find the weight of this one. You know what? I think I made a mistake. Um, no, I'm sorry. Forget that. <laughs> you didn't hear that. I'm back on one to five. I did it right. Sorry about that. Okay, so we got cubic feet. Find the gallons. I did have it written down correctly here. So if you want gallons, remember you multiply by 7.5 like that. And this answer is going to be in gallons. Okay, remember one gallon, excuse me, one cubic foot, seven and a half gallons. All right, so this one here is just a straight up multiplication problem. Times 7.5 equals... 21, 120. Yep, 21, 120. I'm just checking against what I had before. Okay, so this is if you had a basement full of water. And the basement being roughly half the size of the house. Now, actually, this goes back. Not war story. Make it short. Uh, this would be, let's see. About late late 1970s, it was a solar house down in Saunders Town, Rhode Island. It was a long ride, like an hour ride to get there. And all I did was run pipe, hundreds of feet of three-quarter copper. It was in the t at the time when they had solar panels that had water on the panels. It would, like, run down and get heated by the sun, heating up like a black panel. And uh, when it was shut off, the water would go down so it wouldn't freeze in the winter. This holding tank, get this, it was the basement. So this tank that I showed you was probably about the size um, of half the guy's basement, which was what they used to store the hot water. Now, the water never got hot enough. I don't know how it was insulated. I suspect they had insulation all around the concrete. I didn't see that going. But the water was not hot enough to run baseboard. By the way, you should know that baseboard cannot run less than 160 degrees. Under that, it's not at all effective. Even 160 is not the best. It's rated at 185. That's where you get your 600 BTUs per foot. That's where they size it up. That's how your heat estimators uh, decide, you know, what you got at, is at 185. That's how they size it. All right, this water was only, I don't know what it was, but it was nowhere near that. It might have been 100, 110 degrees. So what they did is they cut holes in the floor and had louvers like a hot air system. So the heat from the water in the cellar would go up through the floor. Very interesting. I never had a call back, which was okay. I really don't like to drive an hour because I screwed up and had a leak, right? Uh, but I would like to have seen it or found out how it worked. In any case, it was, now that I look at this here, it was probably all of that size in gallons. It's a lot of water. Okay, now let's take this same problem, which was number seven, and excuse me, number eight, how much does this weigh? Okay, so what does a, a gallon of water weigh? These numbers that I'm throwing out there, you're going to have to memorize them, and there's no two ways about it, All right? They're not going to give you these. So you got to, you know, spend some time learning this stuff. Now, you guys, I know it's tier one and tier two, so you don't need it for like at least three years. But sooner or later, you're going to have to get it down. 
All right, let's see uh, what this is going to be. So we got 21, 120 times 8.33 equals. One seventy five nine twenty nine. I think there was a little bit of a pot of a gallon. If this, don't worry about it. On a test, I'm sure that you'll if you, within like ten gallons, you'll be fine. Okay, so this here, I mean ten pounds. Obviously, this is extremely heavy. Um, but in the basement, not a not a big deal. Okay, but that's how much it would weigh. All right, the last two. And uh, let me check that time. Oh, eight. Okay, the last two um, is the Celsius and the Fahrenheit. And this video is going to be too long, so I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to end this video right here, and we'll pick up the Celsius and Fahrenheit on the other side.